Our next witness is Gail Trotter. She's the co-founder of Schaefer and Trotter PLC. It's a law firm here in Washington. She's also a senior fellow at the Independent Women's Forum. Attorney Trotter, good to have you here. Go ahead, please. Chairman Leahy, Ranking Member Grassley, and members of this committee, thank you for inviting me to appear before you today. We all want a safer society. We differ on how to make our society safer, and we differ on whether some proposals will actually increase public safety. I urge you to reject any actions that will fail to make Americans safer, and in particular, harm women the most. I would like to begin with the compelling story of Sarah McKinley. Home alone with her baby, she called 911 when two violent intruders began to break down her front door. These men were forcing their way into her home to steal the prescription medication of her recently deceased husband. Before police could arrive, while Ms. McKinley was still on the phone with 911, these violent intruders broke down her door. One of the men had a foot-long hunting knife. As the intruders forced their way into her home, Ms. McKinley fired her weapon, fatally wounding one of the violent attackers. The other fled. Later, Ms. McKinley explained, it was either going to be him or my son, and it wasn't going to be my son. Guns make women safer. Over 90% of violent crimes occur without a firearm, which makes guns the great equalizer for women. The vast majority of violent criminals use their size and their physical strength to prey on women who are at a severe disadvantage. In a violent confrontation, guns reverse the balance of power. An armed woman does not need superior strength or the proximity of a hand-to-hand -hand struggle. Concealed carry laws reverse that balance of power even before a violent confrontation occurs. For a would-be criminal, concealed carry laws dramatically increase the risk of committing a crime. This indirectly benefits even those who do not carry. Research shows that in jurisdictions with concealed carry laws, women are less likely to be raped or murdered than they are in states with more restrictions on gun ownership. Armed security works. Brave men and women stand guard over Capitol Hill, including this building where we are now. Armed guards protect high-profile individuals, including prominent gun control advocates, some of whom also rely on personal gun permits. While armed security works, gun bans do not. Anti-gun legislation keeps guns away from the sane and the law-abiding, but not criminals. No sober-minded person would advocate a gun ban instead of armed security to protect banks, airports, or government buildings. We need sensible enforcement of the laws that are already on the books. Currently, we have thousands thousands of under-enforced or selectively enforced gun laws, and we fail to prosecute serious gun violations and impose meaningful, consistent penalties for violent felonies involving firearms. Instead of self-defeating gestures, we should address gun violence based on what works. Guns make women safer. The Supreme Court has recognized that lawful self-defense is a central component of the Second Amendment's guarantee of the right to keep and bear arms. For women, the ability to arm ourselves for our protection is even more consequential than for men, because guns are the great equalizer in a violent confrontation. As a result, we protect women by safeguarding our Second Amendment rights. Every woman des deserves a fighting chance. Thank you. Ms. Trotter, your testimony discussed the need for women to be able to use firearms to defend themselves and their families. The law currently permits the lawful possession of semi-automatic rifles such as uh, AR-15, 
Can you tell us why you believe a semi-automatic rifle such as AR-15 has value as a weapon of self-defense, and does banning, weapon, uh, banning guns which feature designs to improve accuracy disproportionately burden women? I believe it does. Young women are speaking out as to why AR-15 weapons are their weapon of choice. The guns are accurate. They have good handling. They're light. They're easy for women to hold. And most importantly, their appearance. An assault weapon in the hands of a young woman defending her babies in her home becomes a defense weapon. And the peace of mind that a woman has as she's facing three, four, five violent attackers, intruders in her home with her children screaming in the background, the peace of mind that she has knowing that she has a scary looking gun gives her more courage when she's fighting hardened, violent criminals. And if we ban these types of assault weapons, you are putting women at a great disadvantage, more so than men, because they do not have the same type of physical strength and uh, opportunity to defend themselves in a hand-to-hand -hand struggle. And they're, they're not criminals, they're moms, they're young women, and they're not used to violent confrontation. So I absolutely urge I, I, I speak on behalf of millions of American women across the country who urge you to defend our Second Amendment right to choose to defend ourselves. Have been a Sunfish production.